as you all know, today we are celebrating as Mother's Day. So let's thank God for all our mothers, for their sacrifice, for their dedication, and their tiresome work for their kids. Whether young or old, remember your mother. Remember what all they have done for you. You are here in this situation, in this uh, position. It's because of your mother. Because she is our everything. Let's thank God. Let's praise God. Today is a special uh, Sunday for us. So our Susan Thomas will be delivering the word of God. Now I invite Susan Thomas uh, for the message. Representing all our mothers today. Praise God. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. I thank and praise Almighty Father for all the amazing Oreb mothers. I thank God for his divine call for me at this blessed occasion to stand before you today. Thank you, Achen, for giving me this opportunity and for your prayers. Mother's Day celebrated in United States on the second Sunday in May. It was established by Anna Jarvis, with the first official Mother's Day celebrated through a worship service at the Mother's Church in Virginia in 1908. I want to share a story with you. This is a story of a child ready to be born. The child was very scared and worried to leave his paradise of comfort and was very worried. But the child was in constant conversation with God. The child asked God, I overheard a conversation that you are going to send me to earth tomorrow. How I am going to stay there? I am small and helpless and weak. God replied, among the many angels, I have chosen one special one for you. She will be waiting for you and will take care of you. The child said, but tell me here in paradise, I don't do anything else. I just smile and sing. That's all what I need to be happy. God replied, your angel will sing for you every day and you will feel your angel's love and happiness. And so be happy. And said the child, how am I going to be able to understand when people talk to me? I don't know their language. That's easy, God said. Your angel will tell you the most beautiful and sweet words you will ever hear. And be with much patience and care. She will teach you how to speak. The child looked up at God and saying, And what am I going to do when I want to talk to you? God smiled at the child saying, Your angel will teach you how to pray. The child said, I have heard that on earth there are few mean people. Who will protect me from those people? God replied, your angel will defend you, even if it means risking life. The child looked at God and said, I will always be sad because I am leaving you. I will not see you anymore. I will be homesick. God replied, your angel will always talk to you about me 
and will teach you the way to come back to me. So no worries. And I will be always next to you. Suddenly, there was much peace in the paradise, but voices fr from the earth could already be heard. The child, in a hurry, asked softly, Oh God, if I am about to leave now, please let me the name of the angel. God replied, You simply call her mother. You simply call her mother. Let's pray. Gracious Father, thank you for allowing us to come together in your presence this morning. Loving God, we thank you that you love us as a as God mother loves the child and watch over us every moment. Lord, bless all mothers and families. Father, be with us as we meditate on your eternal words. Let the words of my mouth and meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Let's meditate together about mother's role in our lives, not with, within our families, in the community, and in the wider world. This is a time also to remember the love and sacrifice of our foremothers. Mother's Day celebration is a time to pause and ex express our gratitude for our mothers, grandmothers, and aunts for their love and sacrifice. In the Holy Bible, God's love is represented as mother's love in different places. Motherhood is a spiritual gift. It is a calling because its origin is from God's institution of family, according to his plan. On this Med Mother's Day, let's meditate on two wonderful mothers from today's first lesson reading and the gospel reading. And we will focus on only on few characteristics of a mother from those readings. Let me emphasize, a mother can take the role of anyone, but no one else can take the place of a mother other than a mother. Mother is a wonderful creation, being a woman, creation of creation and creation of generations. Mother always find room to solve any problems in any crisis on the way. Let's take our Bible, open the portion 2 Kings chapter 4 verses 8 through 37. 2 Kings chapter 4 verses 8 through 37. This Bible passage is about the Shunammite woman, a very prominent lady in the town of Shunam. We don't know the name of the woman, but she is remember, known as the woman of Shunam. A blessed woman and later a blessed mother by whom we all know Shunam now. Because of this mother's character and honor, the town is honor and remember. Let's look at her characters. The first character, she was prepared a room for prophet Elisha. Second Kings chapter 8 through 10. Elisha, God's prophet of Israel, traveled through Shunem. Shunammite woman urged him to be, have meal with her family. She was a well-to-do woman. She convinced her husband to prepare a separate room on the roof with a table, a chair, and a lamp. She knew Elisha was a man of God. Then with great spirit of hospitality, she invited the prophet and Gehazi, his servant, to stay with her whenever they were in that area. So Elisha and Gehazi accepted the invitation and stayed uh, in their home where, and they were very well taken care of. She made a space for God. Few other examples in Bible who showed hospitality. 
റിബേക്ക ലിദിയ മാർത്ത ആൻഡ് മേരി ആൻഡ് സോ ഓൺ ലൈക്ക് ദിസ് വണ്ടർഫുൾ വുമൺ ഷുഡ് വി ഷുഡ് ഓൾസോ ഷോ അൺ അൺകണ്ടീഷണൽ ലവ് ആൻഡ് ഹോസ്പിറ്റാലിറ്റി ഫോർ അതേഴ്സ് Revelations chapter 3 verse 20 Here I am I stand at the door and knock if anyone hears my voice and opens the door I will come in and eat with that person and abide with me Jesus still passes by and he wants to abide with us but we need to make a place for him Jesus doesn't force his way into our heart but he wants us to choose him when we have room for god miracles will happen right there the woman kept her door open without a knocking are we ready to open our door without any knock from jesus secondly secondly a woman whose priority is to serve even in midst of suffering that's we can see in that in second kings chapter 4 verses 11 to 14 elisha was very much impressed by the hospitality of the woman elisha asked her if there was anything he could do for her and her response was i am happy i am content water with whatever i have i am happy with my family i am happy with this town where i live i don't need anything but elisha keep asking her how, what can i do for you she said all is well i am all right but she didn't have any children and she longed for a children for a very long time being childless was very embarrassing in that society those days in her personal pain she resisted focusing only on herself and her worries instead she turned outward and toward others in sacrificial service that's what jesus god want us also to do thirdly this woman was an embodiment of unconditional love and compassion our love savior jesus christ is god and god's love in human form mother is the human embodiment of god's love and compassion on this earth this is the reason god's love is often represented in bible as god mother's love god's love is unconditional one way or, or another we are sinning every moment but still god loves us similarly a mother's love for her children is also unconditional through his servant gehasi elisha came to know that this woman did not have a child elisha told her next year this time you will get a son but her reply was please man of god don't mislead your servant that was her answer the shunamite women served elisha out of her com- unconditional love and compassion out of her compassion and love for god first corinthians chapter 13 verses 4 through 7 first corinthians chapter 13 verses 4 through 7 this pass whole pass bible passage tells about the characteristics of love what are the different kinds of love and i want to read because of the time i want to read only verse 7 it love always protects love always trust love always hopes love always preserves this is what a mother does i am sure we all practice this every day fourthly a woman who is a symbol of strong faith and gratitude jesus sets an example for his followers to grow in his faith and also express a sense of gratitude always even in times of scarcity and need one example just one example is jesus thank heavenly father 
before feeding the 5,000 with five loaves of bread and two fish. <coughs> Let's look at 2 Kings chapter 4, 17 to 26. This Bible portion tells us that the woman gave birth to a child as promised by Elisha, and the child grew, but one day, the unexpected worst thing happened. He became sick and died. Look at the, what the Shunammite, this woman, this mom did. She put the baby in Elisha's bed. Instead of following the tradition, Jewish traditions, she rushed to Mount Carmel to see Elisha, the man of God. Elisha asked her, are you all right? Is your husband all right? Your son is all right. What's her answer? Her answer is, everything is fine. I am all right. My husband is all right. My son is all right. Her son already died, but her answer is, he's all right. <clears throat> she knew who Elisha was. She calls Elisha man of God. So her strong faith surpasses all her pain and petitions. And she knows that his pres Elisha's presence in her home will bring a solution to the crisis. That's why she said, everything is all right. Then in verse 27, we see that she took hold of Elisha's feet and opened her mind. Elisha understood her distress and the deep pain. And he sent Gehazi to his, her home. But because of the woman's persistence, Elisha went to her house. She knew that if he had been there that time, it would not have happened. And Elisha prayed to the Lord and restored his life. This incident reminds us of Jesus' presence in Martha and Mary's home after Lazarus' burial. Martha told Jesus that if Jesus had been here, her brother, brother would not have died. Shunammite woman, Mary and Martha knew who holds their breath. This is how a mother should be. We should know who holds our breath, who holds our future, who holds the future of our children. Lord's presence brings miracles in our lives. <coughs> the faith of this woman, uh, Shunammite woman is incredible. She was full of love for God and very kind. Yes, she prepared a space for God. She was courageous and believed that the God of Israel would answer her prayers and could restore his son, her son back to life. The woman was very grateful and was, had a very strong faith in God. Now, I draw your attention to most blessed mother, none other than Mary, mother of Jesus. That's our gospel reading today, the portion, St. John, chapter 19, verses 25 to 27. In the verse 19, chapter John, St. John, chapter 19, verse 25, Mary standing near the cross with very great courage and strength. Her friends comforted her, but many who loved Jesus and his disciples, except John, scattered in fear. But Mary and her friends were standing near the cross. Mary gave birth to Jesus according to Heavenly Father's will. And she raised him in God's wisdom, kept her divine role of walking with Jesus as his earthly ma mother in all the major events. We all know Mary's role in the first miracle of Jesus during Cana. She knew the problem, alerted her son to the call of the Spirit to glorify God in the crisis. That crisis in the ends up in a glorious event hailed by the generations till the end of the earth. She followed her beloved son 
in his ministry along with the disciples till the till at the cross this is the best example of perfect faith in god and submission to his will for mary the pain was unbearable but she took it she not only witnessed her son die but also the horror of the manner of his death she knew deeply and intimately the perfection and innocence while jesus was suffering in his physical body mary was suffering right along with him in the depth of the soul there was nothing mary could do that time to help jesus but she trusted and submitted to the will of god <coughs> we knew the plan of god she knew the plan of god right from the time of conceiving by holy spirit that her son would be raised to glory there are many examples of biblical mothers sara rebecca jochebed hannah ruth elizabeth eunice and louis and so on let's pray that god grant us such a, such a heart of perfect obedience faith and submission to god's will in the midst of unbearable physical suffering jesus remained attentive to his mother's well being jesus entrusted his mother to the care of john saint john chapter 19 26 to 27 that's what jesus did as a child of god we are entrusted with a great responsibility exodus chapter 20 verse 12 honor your father and mother so that you may live longer in this land the lord of god is giving you we all know about saint monica monica was raised in a christian home she endured a difficult life but she overcame her difficulties with her prayers and virtuous life through her prayers and virtues her husband her mother in law and her children became christians but she prayed for her elder son augustine for 30 years it's not one day it's not two days 30 30 years she prayed for her son after 30 years augustine her elder son accepted jesus as savior because monica's prayer a sinful youth was transformed to a saint to carry the light of the cross of faith and practice of the christian church to the future generations monica became a mother of one of the greatest saints in the history in the church history monica also was also honored with sainthood my dear brothers mothers motherhood is a divine calling it's a privilege it is a great responsibility god's great plan with his promise of his presence with us all the time let us submit to his will as mothers we all have many challenges worries and struggles in on our way personally i also have my own worries and challenges all the time but god has been faithful to us let us trust in his great promise isaiah chapter 41 10 let me read so do not fear for i am with you do not be dismayed for i am your god i will strengthen you and help you i will uphold you with my righteous right hand to experience this let us obey the first and second com greatest commandments saint matthew chapter 22 verses 37 to 39 and we can see that in saint mark chapter 12 30 also jesus replied love the lord your god with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind this is the first and the greatest commandments and so the second is like love your neighbor as yourself 
with these words. May the Lord help us, guide us to live for the glory of God. Amen.